The Day of Pentecost by Pastor Andrew Rawlings. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. It is better that we read the entire chapter, but however, for the sake of this morning's sermon, I want to read Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under the heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? May God bless the reading. Of his word. Beloved, the day of Pentecost. Pentecost is the celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Fire symbolizes God's purifying presence, which burns away the undesirable elements of our lives. Our giftings must be matched by a godly and desirable character. It's one thing to speak of the life, and it's another thing to live it. At Pentecost, fire came down on many believers, symbolizing that God's presence is available to all who believe in Him. These believers literally spoke in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This action grabbed for the attention of the international crowd that had gathered in Jerusalem for the festival. You see, after all, Christianity is not limited to any race, it's not limited to any group of people. Salvation is offered to everyone. Without speaking in tongues is the language of the spirit, not of the intellect. And that is why many people who our intellectual despise speaking in tongues. You see, our spirits can communicate directly with God when we speak in tongues without the aid of the mind. Their speaking in tongues was through the power given them through the Holy Spirit's indwelling. There are times, my brothers and sisters, when praise is offered to God cannot be fully expressed or conceptualized without something beyond the regular. The Holy Spirit helps us to rise above our limitations and releases us from within. It is important to note that when we pray and we seek in God, that the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells us allows us to speak in different tongues to God, to relate directly to Him. But I just want to share this morning Apostle Paul's view on speaking in tongues. And if we had the time, we will exegete 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I will request you to read that. And Paul then states that what is spoken to God in tongues, no man understands. Paul speaks of these as mysteries to the intellect of man. These are mysteries to the intellect of man. And hence you will find some people that will try and ridicule those who speak in tongues, but they do not understand that they are beyond themselves. They're in the spiritual realm. It's a different experience. And you'll find some, some people who do not understand the move of God and the power of God 
that is released in us in speaking in tongues that they will be again speaking in tongues because they do not understand what God is busy doing during that time. However, the Holy Spirit, and if the Holy Spirit wills that you speak in tongues for men to understand, it will have to be interpreted. Having said that, our text, particularly the latter verses, when Peter addresses an international crowd, he does so in his own language, a language that promotes common understanding. And the amazing thing is that this Peter, who had been an unstable leader during Jesus' ministry, is now completely transformed after the day of Pentecost. After this, this experience of Pentecost, really this Peter was very, very unstable. All of a sudden there's a transformation that takes place in his life. This is the same Peter who had denied knowing Jesus, but is now an empowered man, bold and full of confidence. This determined Peter is now a powerful and dynamic speaker, speaking under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It is this anointed Peter who is now able to refute the allegations that they were drunk. In chapter 2 and verses 24, the Bible tells us that Peter began with public proclamation of the resurrection at a time when there were many witnesses in Jerusalem after the Passover. In verses 25 and 32, 32 Peter is quoting from Psalm 16, a Psalm of David, explaining that David was not writing about himself. After a powerful, spiritual message by the same Peter, the people were moved. They were cut to the heart, asking, what shall we do? Peter's response was, repent and be baptized. On that day, about 3,000 people became new believers as Peter preached about the risen Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit reveals God's thoughts. John chapter 14 and verses 26, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. These are the words of Jesus. The Holy Spirit, His power and ability. Acts chapter 1 and verses 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Power from the Holy Spirit is not limited to strength beyond the ordinary. That power also involves courage, it involves boldness, it involves confidence, insight, ability, and authority. This gives unnecessary, my brothers and sisters, for us to fulfill all, to fulfill all uh, our work that we have to do here on earth for the Master. Our salvation and obedience affords all of us the opportunity to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. After appropriating the power, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the lives of the believers were never the same again. Is it not amazing that when God calls people, He never looks for models? And I'm referring particularly to Peter. He's always looking for ordinary people whom he can change by the power of his love. People on whom he can place his Holy Spirit and give a mandate to proclaim the good news. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we may wonder what Jesus sees in us in spite of our failures. 
It's something that he sees the potential that, that is within us. He's never looking at our faults. He's never looking at our failures. He looks at us and he sees potential within us. You see, God is, is prepared to strengthen your weaknesses, to strengthen my weaknesses. But he's also prepared to exploit your strengths and to exploit my strengths to the honor of his glory. Amen. Saints, how we thank God that at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was released to all. It was released to men, women, slaves, Jews, and Gentiles. Now everyone can receive the Spirit. Oh, what a privilege we have to be able to receive from God the Holy Spirit that will enable us to do that which God has called us to do. And so may God grant us grace, we pray this morning. May God strengthen us. Even as we go into this time of prayer, may God help us that you do so under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But I want to say to you this morning also, it's important for us to invite you to this experience. And all that you need to do is to surrender your life to Jesus. Come just as you are. And all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that He is Lord. And that you will, can be saved through His grace. And so I want to pray for you at home that God will touch you that you might have the experience of Pentecost. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we can come to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We come to you as ordinary people. We do not come to you as models, but we come to you in simple childlike faith. We pray that even as we celebrate the day of Pentecost, that we might have a Pentecostal experience, that the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon us so that we might be witnesses for you wherever we go. Continue to work in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving.